Welcome to our lecture online. This video will help us understand this concept of the center of mass in collisions even more. Again, we start with the same situation that we had in the previous video. We have two objects, one of mass m, the other one of mass 2m, approaching one another. The small mass moving to the right at 8 meters per second, the large mass moving to the left at minus 2 meters per second. And at this moment in time, when they're 10 meters apart, we see that the center mass is at 14 and 2 thirds meter. And if you wanted to know how to calculate that, you can go to the previous video and take a look. One second later, they now collide. Their center mass is, of course, where the objects are at, at 16 meters, at the exact location. So they're colliding. And then, let's assume there are three possible solutions. Depending upon how much of the energy is lost in the collision, and that depends on the material of the objects involved, we have potentially three different scenarios that we can up with. The first scenario is where the first mass moves to the right, or the large mass moves to the right at 2 meters per second, and the small mass stays in its location, so the velocity after the collision is zero for the small mass. A second scenario is where we have the large mass moving to the right at 3 meters per second and the small mass moving to the left at minus 2 meters per second. The third scenario is where we have the large mass moving to the right at 4 meters per second and the small mass moving to the left at 4 meters per second, all after the collision. You will see that if you calculate the conservation of momentum in each case, that those are absolutely correct values for the situation after the collision. When we have this momentum before the collision, then we can have these three scenarios. The difference is all dependent upon how much of the energy is lost in the collision. Notice when we calculate the coefficient of restitution, in this case, most of the energy is lost, and the coefficient of restitution is a small quantity, one-fifth. Here, the coefficient of restitution is larger, which means that not as much energy is lost, and here the coefficient of restitution is four-fifths, which means almost all the energy was retained, so to speak, very little of the energy was lost. Again, it's not an exact one-to-one -one correspondence to the amount of energy lost. It's only an approximation, or it gives us a feel for the relative amount of energy that was lost in the collision. But what's amazing about this whole thing is that we realize that before the collision, the center of mass was moving to the right at 4 thirds meters per second. Notice that regardless as to how much energy was lost, what the coefficient of restitution was due to the collision, the center of mass one second after the collision will be in the exact same location regardless what happened in the collision, regardless how much energy was lost, and regardless what the coefficient restitution is. We can always be sure that whatever the rate of motion was of the center mass before the collision, that rate of motion will continue after the collision. Regardless of the sizes of the objects, regardless of the elasticity of the collision, regardless as to what happens before and after the collision. It's actually quite remarkable that is really the concept of conservation of momentum, that the center of mass of the system of objects colliding before and after the collision, whatever the center mass is doing before the collision, will be exactly the same as what the center mass is doing during and after the collision as well. And that helps us really understand the concept of moment of inertia and also the concept of coefficient of restitution. And that's how we know.